on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. Tonight on Piers Morgan Uncensored, Russell Brand is back, breaking his silence on Rumble with another conspiracy-laden tirade. But with advertisers pulling out and the police now investigating, what will happen to the troubled star? Members of England ladies' angling team refused to go to the World Championships in protest over a trans teammate. Are they right? Does physical brawn make a big difference in the world of angling? I'll talk to the two women at the very deep end of this story. Ask questions I never thought I'd have to ask. Did you wear anal beads while cheating? I get to the bottom of Chess's biggest ever scandal in an exclusive interview with the new bad boy of Chess, Hans Niemann. Live from the News Building in London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. I'm going to tell you a little story. It's about an advertising campaign so helplessly woke and absurd that I'm convinced it was designed specifically to irritate me. Not long ago, in a large glass building filled with smug people and kale smoothies, the marketing team at HSBC commissioned a children's author to rewrite three classic fairy tales. You might well think that's an unusual thing for a bank to do. If you're sitting comfortably, I'll allow them to explain. With financial attitudes shaped as early as five years old, the new book challenges traditional gender stereotypes, it says. At this point, I've already lost track, really, of exactly why the bank is rewriting fairy tales or what any of it has got to do with gender stereotypes. But it gets worse. The book called Fairer, Fairer Tales reimagines Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty and Rapunzel as successful businesswomen. Prince Charming is inevitably erased as the main character. He's a prince and he's charming. But apparently that's not enough. The marketing geniuses decided to pay tennis player Emma Raducanu to read the stories, for reasons which remain unclear. This is how it went. Ace, where have you been? The boys and girls are here and they're waiting to hear the three tales about... Money. My name's Emma and this is Ace. We have a fantastic story for you today. Now, the story may seem like one you'd know, but the characters in it are a little bit different. It's hard to believe, but the tennis ball exchanging hilarious banter with Emma Raducanu in the video is not real. It's CGI, and believe it or not, Emma is a tennis player, not an actor. But let's not distract from the powerful core message. So in the end, the princesses didn't need a prince to save them. They set up their own businesses, saved their money, and then spent it very wisely. Thanks to our princesses, Ace has learned some new money skills. Maybe you'll buy a tower one day, or set up your own shoe business, or any business you want. Now that you've learned how to save and spend money, you can do anything. Of course, as we all know, the best way to improve the aspirations of women is by trashing men. And as Emma says, women don't need men at all. She certainly never needed any men, as far as we know, to get where she is today. Except, well, a father, of course, who manages her career and, well, fathered her. And then there are her five coaches, who so far have all been male. Or Max Eisenbud, her agent, who apparently is very, very good at maximising her earning potential, despite being a man. And then a final twist of this dastardly tale of virtue signaling treachery, it turns out the chairman, chief executive and chief financial officer on HSBC's board of directors are all men too. Well, joining me now is talk to be contributor Esther Cracker, associate editor of the Mirror, uh, Kevin Maguire, and socialist author Grace Blakely. Grace, <laughs> uh, I don't know where to start with this. I mean, apart from the fact that as a man, let me just offer Miss Radigarna some advice. I think she's great. Uh, and when she won the US Open, it was amazing. But she hasn't won a shoebox since then. And I think she's spending too much time on this commercial stuff and not enough time on the court. That's my personal view as a man. Take it, leave it, Here, trash it, whatever I you want. Think, I think you're missing, actually, the most important part of this story, right? Which isn't like the, the big man versus women battle that we're all supposed to take a side in. It's the fact that HSBC is a massive international you know, bank that has frequently been accused of 
uh, things like money laundering. It was accused of money laundering for Mexican drug cartels. It was accused of supporting tax avoidance and evasion. It's frequently threatened the government of the UK to relocate to another part of the world if it, if we, you know, um, say do something like raise tax tax on corporations or if we start regulating the financial sector properly. And this is basically attempt, an attempt at kind of pink washing. It's saying, don't look at all the terrible things that we've been embroiled in over the last several decades. Don't look at the fact that we're basically trying to undermine democracy by, by telling you what laws you can and can't pass. Just look at the fact that we've done a nice, pretty little fairy tale. And oh, by the way, if you're a woman and you start a business, then that's great. And that makes you a good woman. Feminism isn't for people who don't get the chance to start. Business. And it certainly isn't a, a great thing to be a woman at HSBC, where the vast majority of the people that well, run the bank men, yeah. are actually men. I mean, that's the, the problem with this, it's a bit like Barbie, the movie. It's a mm. bit like all these things. There's a kind of subtext here of, well, men are pointless and annoying and you should never not just rely on them, but have them in your life. Just well, expunge think... men from the world and all will be fine. Well, yes, but I think that, that we should be more concerned with why a bank or any business feels the need to actually do this. I, I don't remember asking HSBC what they think about fairy tales or mm. women in business or anything like that. Why can't they just be a business? Why do businesses feel the need to, to lecture us or take a particular po political position as if we need them as our moral, moral I, arbiters? I, 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 mean, I totally agree. I mean, Kevin, I, Kevin, we've seen this time and again now. Companies just doing these woke advertising campaigns, none of which work. Right, there's an immediate backlash from all their customers who don't like this kind of thing. I think it's a growing number of people, whether you're Bud Light or Gillette when they played this stunt or any of these others, now we have this. It's not going to work. It's not going to achieve what they think it is. People aren't going to go, fantastic, HBC. They're either going to say what Grace said, which is, you're just a bunch of flaming hypocrites, or they're going to say, stop talking to me about this stuff. Just make my bank do, do its job. Be a banker. That's why I love it, because it backfires. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 is, right. it is entirely cynical by this bank, which, look, you open a business with them, you can't keep up your repayments on a loan, and they'll have you. They'll have the shirt off your back, they'll have oh, your yeah. handbag, your shoes, they'll have your house, they'll have every last penny you've got. But somehow, there's a whole industry convincing them they should do this. Can and I, whoever, I, whoever, I think whoever's this is... doing it, a good look to the advertising people who get them to do this nonsense. Can I just say, uh, yeah. I kudos to Emma Raducanu's agent for actually getting her this game because ready. she's a terrible actress. Yeah. She looks like as wooden as a board. Yeah. And she doesn't even I believe think, what she's reading. I think there right. is a, an important underlying story here, right, which is the reason that we've had this explosion in kind of, you know, greenwashing, pinkwashing, things like ethical consumption, is that most people realise that the system we live in is incredibly unfair. They want to, you know, do things to support, to prevent climate breakdown. They want to do things to support, you know, equal rights and, and prevent, you know, the economy from privileging certain people over others. And corporations are basically trying to make money out of this. Yeah. Just like they're making money out of the climate, you know, work. dying. Just like they're making money out of the gap between... between well, let's, women OK, and let's pay. move on to uh, this concept of making money out of things and who should and who shouldn't. So Russell Brand, today the Met Police in the last few hours, Kevin, have announced yeah. that they are launching a police investigation into what they call historic allegations. We, we don't know... We don't know who it's from. We don't know which of the stories, whether they're the people who came forward to the Sunday Times or Channel 4, whether they're new people. They haven't explained yet exactly who these accusers are, but it's certainly multiple people. And it takes it to where I've wanted this to go, which is legal due process. Yeah. We're now going to have a proper police investigation. But what still concerns me about the story is what is going on off the back of the original investigation, which is this sort of huge concerted effort to cancel Russell Brand, who is now doing exactly what I knew he would do. He's, he's exploiting that to say, look, it's all a witch hunt. They're all trying to shut me down. Let's take a little look at his clip on Rumble today. Plainly, this is a story that is much bigger than me. Plainly, the Trusted News Initiative has an agenda, an explicit agenda, to throttle and choke independent media. Plainly, the government are reaching out to ask big tech platforms to suppress the voices of content creators from independent media outlets, particularly those that are dissenting. And as you have seen, many of those media organisations have been willing to comply. Now, Esther, mm. this is all heading to a very dark place, yeah. I think. You now have Russell Brand facing a serious police investigation into rape, sexual abuse, all sorts of very serious allegations. But he's just carrying on like nothing's happened. He did a two-hour rant today with all sorts of conspiracy fueled stuff, his normal sort of shtick. Um, what do you feel about the way he's behaving, a lot of his allegations? There's no apology, there's no clarification, there's just this ongoing, no, it's all a witch hunt. 
uh, and also the way the world is responding to these allegations. Yeah, well, I saw this coming because this is this is why I said originally these women should have gone to the police because now we live in an era when someone is being attacked like this. It's automatically a conspiracy. And I just think there's nothing that particularly special about Russell Brand. He's not an intellectual luminary for the likes of CNN or any of these massive media corporations mm. to be scared of. The reality is he has been accused of something very serious and the, the, the law should, should play out. Uh, the reality is, at the end of the day, he's going to keep going and saying that this is a conspiracy against him. Because, like he says, he's maintaining his innocence. So if he's innocent, he's not going but, to but apologize. Grace, but, Grace, what we, what we have now is you see a trend. Donald Trump sort of started this, really. Boris Johnson has done a bit of it, too, where regardless of the allegation or its seriousness, you simply say it's a witch hunt. Yeah. You simply say it's mainstream legacy mm. media combining with big tech, combining with government, and I'm a victim here. So this kind of turning the thing on its head and using victimhood as a protective shield against this. And they've got millions of people who go along with this. Well, again, you know, I think this is... It's similar to the last story, and you led on from it, in the sense yeah. that um, people are... People like Russell Brand are taking advantage of a climate, basically, of kind of fear and mistrust that mm. exists in our society because of the massive disparities of power that do exist there, right? There is, you know, a, a massive coordination in terms of the power of a small number of media organisations. It is difficult for smaller media organisations to get through that. Um, there are, you know, a lot of very troubling things that um, have been, you know, done or covered up by people at the top of our society, mm. whether we're looking at, you know, billions of dollars distributed to private corporations during the financial crisis or COVID or whatever. People know that the people at the top of our society do not have their best interests at heart and often lie to them um, about what is actually going on. And that is what fuels conspiracy. And, Ke and Kevin, yeah. the trouble is, when, when we had the chair of the parliamentary committee, uh, Caroline Dynage, I think it is, yeah. when she wrote to the bosses of all the, of the big tech companies to say, you've got to stop monetizing this guy, that kind of overreach by politicians plays completely into the hands of Russell Brand and his followers. That's like clear evidence of a of of the, the state trying to yeah. overreach, yeah. isn't it? I always feel very uncomfortable about politicians using their positions to exert uh, mm. pressure that way. However, if I was running a company, I wouldn't want my ads on his on his channel mm. at the moment when he's facing these accusations. And one way he's right, it is bigger than him, but not in the way he means. In the, in the way it's bigger is one of the reasons um, only one in every hundred reported rapes in the UK end up in court with a prosecution mm. is because too many powerful men mm. and the authorities have, uh, have shouted what, what down is, and not, what is amazing? not acted in the interests of women. Right. I mean, what is amazing is the BBC revealed a couple of days ago a news story involving a woman who went on the record saying that in Los Angeles he had come into yeah. a, a, a bathroom... Uh, where she was, and he'd exposed himself to her and said, I'm going to, you know, sexually have sex with you. And she said, no, you're not, and was disgusted and whatever. And she's only now come forward and, and said it. Again, allegations. Yeah. But what's extraordinary is it then 25 minutes later, he's on the airways on the BBC yeah. joking about this and saying, you know, the guy says 25 minutes ago, you were showing a woman your willy, right? Yeah. So the BBC's got this big archive now of stuff yeah. where they've just broadcast almost confessional stuff from the yeah. brand about yeah. this stuff. Why, why were they not doing more standards and practices at the time? Uh, I, pff, mistakes, frightened, uh, in awe of him, whatever it is. No, look, look, look his he, free he speech. Was yeah, he, he, he was a darling. He was a darling of that subsect yeah. of British media. I mean, his, his, what, well, his free can, can I put a, spa can I put a spanner in the works? Was it because of a time he was a left-wing darling? Exactly. Oh, for goodness well, sake. But it's true. Well, no, I do... I I'm honestly, sorry, have we not seen any right-wing uh, people who've had, you know, allegations of sexual not, assault covered up over the last several... About, we're talking about no, no, institutions. No, no. You're missing my point. Members of the royal family. my point. The left-wing decided he was a superstar... He attended Guardian editorial conferences sitting next to the editor, Alan Rusbridge, who's now outraged by him. He wrote a column for The Guardian for seven years. He appeared at their conferences. He edited The New Statesman. He was on all this stuff, right? I mean, he, was, he was being given... And yet they, they must have known about the stuff that was going out on the BBC at the same time. I mean, did no one at The Guardian think, hang on, is you know, he, you know, he exposed himself to a woman? There, there, was a, there was a culture of permissiveness where powerful mm. men could joke about sleeping and abusing and flashing to women. It was all considered uh, a laugh. Yeah. If you go back in British TV, think of Benny Hill. Yeah. All right, just think of it, you can come up. It happened to people on the right too. But I want to make the point, his free speech is not infringed because he can say what he likes.
but we you can't cannot. It. Be, we cannot say it I because mean, of libel laws, which he uses, defamation laws, which he's been very yeah. ready to do before, and also there are just legal restrictions now because yeah. the police are getting involved. You know, raises a lot of issues. I'm just glad the police are now investigating because we may get to the bottom of it where it becomes irrefutable, right? Even yeah. if there's a proper legal process, I would hope we get to the the facts and the truth. Um, that's not to, not to diminish the accusers. Yeah. They may well all be telling 100% the truth, but we know also, sadly, sometimes accusers do not tell the truth, and yep. we've got to be fair to everyone, whoever they are. Um, let's turn to uh, John Fetterman, who's this senator in America who's obviously had a lot of health issues, but they've now changed the law, not the law, but they've changed the rules of the Senate, that you can now, because he says he gets triggered by having to wear certain clothing to work because of his condition, he now can go in dressed like this, and he's been wearing shorts and hoodies and all sorts of stuff. I mean, Kevin, even you <laughs> now, now appear on television in a smart way. Even you put a jacket and shirt on, right? Even you? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, we drop, when we drop the standards of things like the US Senate, it'd be like the British Parliament. If we had somebody there saying, I get triggered by wearing suits, and we saw someone coming in in shorts and a hoodie, come on. They changed, they changed, actually, in the British Parliament, the House of Commons in the chamber, the rules on having to wear a tie because there was an MP who couldn't t uh, fix a tie because mm. of a medical condition. Look, it's between him and his constituents, oh, the people who oh, elect him. Yeah. That, no, that is it. I'm sorry, if they are happy to elect he, him, you, he can wear he, what he, he wants. He, he can go in a pink he tutu cannot, for he all I can. go in public and moon members of the public yeah. or pull down his trousers. Well, I'm sorry. You, the reason why you, yeah. you, are, you, have, you need to act and dress like like the uh, like you have respect for the office that you occupy. It's not very difficult to put on a shirt. My mother always uh, Well, what I'll about? tell you. Hang on. What about, about freedom of expression? Uh, you know, we have freedom of speech, freedom yeah. of thought, freedom in of your expression. House. Those are supposed <laughs> to be. No, no, no. Those are the liberal rights upon which democracy, British then, democracy, then was founded. Then we are on this show all the time talking about the importance of free speech, the importance of protecting against the despotism of the state. Freedom of expression falls into that category Absolutely as well. Not. Let people do, you know do what, what they want and you know stop what? being so snowy you know you know about people's my personal choices. My mother, my mother always said to me, <laughs> dress as if you're going to meet the Queen. Okay. Okay, Thank you. Quick. I, I would I, wear I what good, I would always wear. I, I think, I think if, you, if you go to work, dress as if you're going to meet the Queen's a pretty good rule. Right? Yeah. But think. if you're a Republican and you think the Queen is just the same as anyone else dress on the street... Dress as yeah. if you're going to meet the well, President. Well, if, he meets, <laughs> if, he, if he meets the Queen, he can empty he, 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 he bins dressed like that, can't he? What I mean, was funny was a New York Post sent a journalist round to all the top yeah. restaurants in New York dressed like, yeah. like him in the hoodie and shorts, and most of them said, you're not coming in here, so <laughs> It was very funny. Uh, I want to leave with a little tribute to Megan Rapino the world's most annoying sports star, who's now retired from international uh, soccer. Uh, and she said this. I feel like the stuff off the field is, um, like, the reason I'm, you know, here on this planet. That feels um, like my life's work and um, something that um, just feels like breathing to me. So um, I love that work. Um, you know, I love being able to leverage this amazing platform and, um, use that to, you know, in some way make the world a, a better place. Oh, shut up. Honestly. Good for her. You're yeah, a good for her. Her. You oh, kick a round little ball around. That's it. Nobody wants to see you, see you make the world a better place. And let me tell you what she means by this stuff off the pitch is that now she's retired, now she says she wants to see biological males who've transitioned to be trans women play in the women's national soccer team. Not while she was playing herself, so they couldn't take her place, uh, these biological males, but now she'd be quite happy for that to happen. In fact, she wants it to happen. If that's what your contribution is to women's rights, because she's basically saying, look at me, I did all this stuff for women's rights. Actually, Miss Rapino, what you've done, you've left with a little sting in the tail, is that now, having fought for women's rights, for pay uh, parity and so on, which I totally applaud you for, now you've left endorsing something that would destroy women's rights to fairness and equality. That is your legacy. Anyone got a thought? Yeah, the um, progress. <laughs> it's absolutely absurd to suggest, you know, the reason that she's left at this point is because her life has become so difficult as she's tried to campaign for fairness and equality for trans women in sport. Mm. Even as she's, you know, fought for a very, very long time to get through all of these measures that you've just said have been really, really important. We've reached the stage where the, the political debate about trans people has become so toxic so Erling Harlan, that she feels like she right, has Grace, to step down right, in order to be a so full-time campaigner. Erling Haaland says, I'm a woman. 
He can play in the women's the team. Number of in the women's team? The number of trans Alina. people Alina. that are going to be I, in I this position. It. It's, it's not right. Right. Oh, hang on. Very <laughs> important question. Grace, can Erling Haaland, if he says, I now identify as a woman, play in the Norwegian uh, national he, he women's Manchester team? Manchester City. He massive He's the best striker right. in the world. Manchester he's six foot four. Yeah. He's a massive beast. He scores goals every 10 seconds in the men's game. Are you if happy... If he suddenly decided yeah. to become trans, yeah. to go through all of the yeah. horror... Actually, you don't have to go through the, anything. The just like... Just self-ID. No, no, you if go through nothing. He, he, he self-identifies as trans. Yeah. He deals with all of the, the pushback on social media, yeah. the death threats, <laughs> yeah. everything that he's going to get um, as a result of that, and then says, I want to become a woman, I want to identify as a woman. Team. Then, you know, the, the team would be <laughs> able to legitimately make a decision as to whether or not that was an so, answer. <laughs> Yeah. That is exactly not? that is yeah. the Megan Rapino position right there. You are our Megan Rapino. You've just destroyed. Thanks. You're saying one... that I'm a, an international women's soccer player. I'm no, sorry. I'm saying Happy you're relatively irritating. Uh, <laughs> uh, take a position which Here's is always the wrong. The feeling is mutual. And on this one, <laughs> <laughs> and on this one, you have just endorsed Erling Haaland playing women's football, which of course would destroy women's football. Congratulations, women's rights nil. I didn't. But look, look, look. I didn't know you were going to leave it there. Power to destroy look, bi football. biological sex matters, right? Yeah. And you, men, born as men, shouldn't be playing yeah. women's sport. But Rapino, free speech. What's wrong with that? She's, Get, nothing. She's allowed to nothing. She's allowed to be. She's nothing. allowed to be. And by the way, yeah. nothing wrong with me exercising my right to free speech to say it's complete, a bit like Grace's position on Ellie Harlan, who she only just heard of, complete <laughs> claptrap. A man uh, can apparently destroy women's football at the touch of a hat. It Crazy. would. It would. It would. Uh, but thank you, Pat. Good to see you all. And then so next, I get to the bottom of Chess's biggest ever scandal with bad boy Hans Neiman. It's one of my most probing interviews ever, and the language has been used very deliberately here. We're talking chess and anal beads. It's not for the faint-hearted, this next segment, this interview. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? He's mocked your weight, Trump. Yeah, look at him. Fail. <laughs> Stop working. Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. Do you believe you can win this war? Is he making me cry again? They're trying to force you out. Yes, I feel betrayed. Keep it award winning. Mwah. Lucy Letby will die behind bars. And a senior doctor who first raised concerns about Letby wants NHS managers to be regulated. We needed answers a lot sooner. This is, what, seven years down the line? I mean, it's, it's completely ludicrous. We need accountability. We need performance in all walks of life. If this nurse had misgendered somebody on a board, she'd have been out the door. When they first got together, there were press stories. Weighty Katie. That would make her a better Princess of Wales. Ghislaine Maxwell agreed to be interviewed for the very first time. I honestly wish I'd never met him. Donald Trump has just said he expects to be arrested at 7.30pm. The Conservative Party can certainly win the next election. Can we? Yes. Labour is 29 no, no, points no, no, ahead no, in the no, polls. No, no, can we? On. Did he say, yes, I have taken drugs and they bent the rules or lied on the visa application form and therefore got it? There needs to be an intervention around abortion laws. Parliament is sovereign. Mm. Parliament can determine these things. The rest of the world has watched on in sort of mounting horror as this story has unravelled. For you, it was incredibly personal. The death toll from the Titanic tragedy has risen to 1,522, and may God rest their souls. Let it roll! If we stop producing oil, the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know now you're probably going to boot me off the chart saying this girl, don't <laughs> get Mark, girl, about get Meghan Mark. Some of them, they're easily led. You can kiss my American ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice of you. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> So are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. <laughs> We're now in Barbie world. You weren't asked to give evidence to the grand jury. I'm the only one that has been telling the truth. You don't drink, never taken drugs. Mm -mm. You're stinking rich. Should you be concerned? By the way? <laughs> if it's on your mind, it's on Talk TV. It's about you and your opinions. If you're thinking about it, 
we're talking about it. It's all about me. That's a joke. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Hans Niemann is a name that may not mean much to you, but he's a chess prodigy. In fact, right now, he's the most controversial chess player perhaps ever. For the past year, he's been at the centre of a salacious scandal that has rocked his sport. And I sat down for an exclusive head-to-head -head with Hans and his lawyer. But first of all, let's take a look at how this scandal unfolded. Hans Niemann is the wild child of chess. A year ago, this 20-year-old US prodigy beat legendary world champion Magnus Carlsen, causing major vibrations in the sporting world. It wasn't just Neiman Bishops causing the buzz. Carlsen sensationally accused him of cheating, which sparked frenzy speculation, including a claim that Neiman used anal beads. Even Elon Musk weighed in. Now, Neiman does admit to cheating twice when he was 12 and 16 with computers, but he says he never did it in person. And he insists he never used anal beads. <laughs> I mean, how, how could I, you know... He sued Carlson for $100 million. The case has now been settled out of court. So will there be a rematch? And can he rebuild his battered reputation? And once and for all, did he or didn't he use the beads? Tonight I'll find out. Hans Neiman goes uncensored. Well, I'm joined now by Hans Neiman and by his lawyer... Terence Ovi. So, first question, uh, Hans, for you. Why have you got your lawyer with you? Well, uh, considering the, the recent uh, case and settlement, uh, some legal questions I'm, you know, my, my lawyer might be able to better answer. And uh, to be honest, uh, I'm, you know, uh, Terry and uh, his team has been, frankly, you know, great in, in, in helping me resolve this case. And uh, I'm very, very thankful to them for believing in me. And, uh, you know, this is not just a uh, he's not just my lawyer, he's, he's a friend, he's a confidant, and he's someone uh, who I trust uh, fully, and uh, uh, that's why he's here today. OK, so, look, you, you are a chess prodigy, no question. You're a grandmaster, which you got that title into 17. You rank the fourth best junior chess player in the world, so you're a brilliant chess player. The question mark that got put over your head came after you beat Norway's world champion, Magnus Carlsen. This is back in uh, Missouri in September... 2022, so a year ago, uh, and you beat him, ending a 53-game unbeaten streak. And uh, as a result, you were accused of being a cheat, and you were accused of cheating in a particularly uh, fascinating manner, which is the allegation was that your coach had basically uh, instructed you to insert anal beads inside yourself, which he would then send remote signals to. Uh, first of all, when that story broke those allegations. What was your reaction? Well, obviously, it was very disheartening uh, to be accused of cheating after, after that victory. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, these things, you know, uh, it, it happened, uh, and I learned a lot from that time, and uh, it really has taught me a lot of very, very important lessons uh, about life and chess, and uh, I think it's only strengthened my resolve. OK, but just to be clear, you didn't cheat? Of course not. So what have you, what have you had to learn if you didn't cheat? Well, uh, I think uh, the learning experience was more so the media attacking me and uh, all the, you know, chess world, you know, crashing down on me. Uh, I think, uh, lear you know, dealing with that, you know, <laughs> was a learning experience, you know, dealing with all that pressure and competing under all that pressure. But, but again, to be clear, on the specific allegation, have you ever used anal beads while playing chess? Not a question I ever thought I'd ask a guest, to be honest, but... Uh, well, you know, your curiosity is a bit concerning, you know. Maybe you're personally interested, but uh, I can tell you no. OK, categoric no. Of course, yes, categorically no. no look, I obviously, I didn't, I didn't make the allegations. I'm just repeating what was put to you at the time. Uh, as a result of the furore that developed, um, you were investigated by chess.com. They banned you uh, while they did this. And they published a report uh, saying that you had likely cheated more than 100 times in online games. You then admitted you had cheated, I think, twice, you said, uh, in online games on chess.com when you were 12 and 16, but denied ever doing so in an in-person game. Is that an accurate uh, assessment of what went down? That's correct. Given you've admitted to cheating, is it completely outrageous 
that people thought you may have continued cheating? Well, let me just clarify that the chess.com report where they, you know, accused me of cheating over 100 games is, is completely defamatory. And, you know, as outlined in my lawsuit, uh, you know, uh, the person who actually wrote that report, uh, Danny Wrench, told me himself uh, that they knew that I had never cheated while streaming. And uh, the most serious accusations in that report happened while I was streaming live on Twitch. And the only reason that they banned me, uh, you know, was because they were finalizing, you know, a merger with the Play Magnus group and uh, their new... You know, you know, star ambassador was making a mockery of himself, and they need to back up his accusations and discredit me. So, Chess.com, Chess.com's report accusing me of 100 games of cheating is, is frankly ridiculous. And the timing that they decided to ban me, you know, only during this merger and only after uh, this accusation, you know, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and that report should not be taken seriously whatsoever. I understand, but, but just to be clear, again, um, Hans, when you did cheat, the ones you've admitted to. What were the circumstances of the cheating? Well, I was 12 years old uh, in the... Uh, uh, I was very young. It, it was not... Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a tournament. But uh, it was a childish mistake and something I've admit to. And uh, I don't think that uh, something you do when you're 12 and something, you know, with, you know, a couple hundred bucks in the line uh, should have any... No, but you know, how, did you, like how saying, did you, you know, cheat? As, uh, someone was... A, it was like an iPad. So someone was giving you moves from an iPad. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a uh, it was a very childish thing. I had no, I didn't even understand the, the seriousness of, of what was happening. But then you were sixteen 12, and did it again. Know, so. Was it the same the same thing again when you were sixteen? Well, when I was when I was sixteen, th this was not a prize money event. These were random, meaningless games. It's like you know going yeah, but how to did play you you know, Call of Duty. And you... It was the similar similar manner. You see, so the first one you could put down to being a 12-year-old kid, all right, you make a mistake, you learn your lesson, you move on. But to do it again four years later when you're 16, it's only like four years ago, why did you do it again? I, I saw those views, those games as, as meaningless. Um, and they were meaningless. There was no money or anything attached to them. And um, again, it was a childish mistake. I was living on my own when I was 16. Um, I was financially independent and uh, I felt a lot of pressure. You know, I just simply wanted to to uh, get a higher rating on, on the website. But I want to make a differentiation, Piers. When, when, you, when you talk about online chess and, and in-person chess, this is a very, very different thing. And you need to understand the difference between that. These online games, th these are absolutely, absolutely meaningless. I, I don't like people that cheat in any form of competitional sport because, to me, it just kills the integrity and purity of it. And I guess you would agree with that, right? No, of course. So, you but you know, should understand, you know, the difference between when you're, a, you know, young child and, and you're under severe pressure and, and, and you make a mistake. And, you know, you should also understand that uh, when it comes to over-the-board official tournaments, I've never cheated and there's absolutely no evidence that I've ever cheated. No, but, we have, in, no, but here's, the the problem. Board, here's you know, the problem with that. I, I, like I say, when you're 12, all right, I get it. But to do the same thing again when you're 16 shows there's a pattern. Well, and we only, we only actually have your word for it, right? I mean, there might not be hard evidence to have nailed you, but you can understand why people will be suspicious given your omissions. Pierce, we understand Hans was 16 years old. He made a mistake. We understand that you have a different uh, interpretation. He was playing online in a game that really didn't matter at, at a young age. Uh, we understand, and you're not wrong, but to try to extrapolate from the fact of something that he did on an online game when he was 16 and say... Once a cheater, always a cheater. If you did something when you were 16, I'm going to hold it against you for the rest of your life. We think that's a little harsh, and it certainly doesn't properly characterize... Out of um, interest... All right, but tell me, why couldn't he answer that question? I think he was trying to... Well, no... Uh, well, he wasn't. You, you jumped question, in. Sorry. Yeah, Hans, I mean, it was really aimed at you. You know, if you cheat in a sport once... Well, well, well when I you're can young... understand, but well, let, let me... Comp let, well, wait, I can give you an analogy as well. So let's say that, you know, you know, you know, a 16-year-old kid went into, like, a a pickup basketball game. That is the equivalent of the games that I cheated in at 16 years old is the equivalent of a meaningless pickup basketball game. Do you think that that should should define my entire career it's not especially a foul, you know, though. you're you're using I'm... you're using you know computerized systems to well, some way of to, okay, to, I understand to that. make but moves some way I mean, of in chess anyway. I can't think of a more egregious way of cheating than doing that. You're using oh. a non-human brain oh. to beat a human. I mean it's just is but he did not do that here. But he didn't. He did not do that here. Meaning, what he did back then, what he did uh, about five years ago, and then about ten years ago, you're correct. He, he's uh, he's admitted that and he's apologized for that. Yeah. But that has absolutely nothing to do with what happened here. It, any nothing else could be closer to the truth. 
Well, on says the next explosive finale to my interview with Hans Neiman. If you thought part one was buzzing with revelations, you might need to strap yourself in for round two. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Center. So now, uh, the second part of my exclusive interview with the chess bad boy grandmaster, Hans Neiman. Things get a little touchy. So you, yesterday, I believe, uh, you played Vladimir Kramnik on chess.com uh, and you beat him. And Kramnik said, said afterwards, I've decided to stop playing on chess.com from tomorrow on. Just too many obvious cheaters on here and nothing is done to clean the platform from these small crooks. Harsh words, but true. What did you, what did you make of that? Well, the Kremnik situation is quite complex because I actually beat him about a week ago and uh, he made a video that was a bit confusing. But um, actually, a couple of days ago, I had private correspondence with him where he told me that he has personally has no issue with me and where he said that uh, he, it was not meant to be an accusation whatsoever. So, uh, what was it supposed I don't to be? I mean, couldn't it couldn't me. have been a more blatant suggestion well, that you cheated again. Well, that's, could that, it? well that contradicts, uh, you know, the, the direct, you know, the, the private correspondence and email that he sent to me. But and, why would uh, he, he actually you, invited me? Why would he me. infer you're a cheat in public in the way that he did? That was yesterday. Well, he, inv he but he, he, it's, he, my name was never mentioned. You know, he's he just, accused he just a lot you. of people of cheating. He accused. Yeah, but he's, he's he played that same day. He played against you know ten other people. Right. And considering that. I was invited by him to Amsterdam to meet him and to play games with him. Um, it seems a bit weird uh, that, you know, uh, that he would do that, you know, and then the next day supposedly accused me of cheating. So 
you know, I understand that how it might look, but, uh, you know, he's privately reached out to me and I was invited to Amsterdam. I unfortunately can't go um, due to another conflict, but uh, I hope to meet him and to discuss things in more detail with him. OK, you sued um, Magnus Carlsen. Isn't that the real damage of this also, Pierce? Isn't that the real damage as well? So whenever now someone beats someone, rather than acknowledge it and say that I'll get better, now this has set a precedent that whenever someone beats you, well, yes, instead of trying to make yourself unfortunately, better, you try to take it away from them. Yes, but unfortunately, actions have consequences. If you admit you've cheated twice over a four-year period, uh, and you become a grand master the year after the second time, and you're now only 20 now, people are going to obviously cast aspersions. Well, why, well, why do you focus on those two isolated incidents? Why don't you focus on well, all the two hundreds of matches that he's won? They're the two your clients admitted well, to. Of course, but the other, the, the other hundreds of matches that he's won, are those totally meaningless? So you can always focus on the shade. I don't know. I don't know. I can well. only... The majority... I'm not judging your client. I'm just saying he's admitted to cheating twice over a four-year period, and that's why maybe people are... In meaningless games, you know. I mean, people do wonder, you're, how you're did correct. you beat... Not... They do wonder, how did you beat Magnus Carlsen? Um... OK, well, if you want to take that logic, you know, you want to take that logic, right? So I have proven my strength, right? Chess.com themselves have said that since I, you know, since they gave me a short ban before, they said that since then I have never cheated. Mm. So... On their website, I've beaten some of the best players in the world. I've performed at the highest level on their website, which they, they themselves say that I, I didn't cheat in. In addition to that, in over-the-board tournaments, I have continued to play chess at a very, very high level. I have, you know, you know my, ranking, I, my ranking did not just drop. I continued to play well even after this victory. I have proven my, my chess level and my chess strength time and time again. This is simply a case of, of you know, where... Bullies are, 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 you know, going after someone because they threaten their business interests. So is you know, Magnus Carlsen a bully? That... Of course he's a bully. He used his entire empire. He used his connections to chess.com. He leveraged his, you know, the fact that there's a, you know, a, a merger happening. And he got all of these people to attack me. And it was, it's a bully. It's a simple thing. But, you know, I don't, you know, let people bully me. I'm going to stand up to him. And I stood up to him. And, you know, I look forward to competing him against the board again. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, do what I do best and, and, and prove myself. Are you still time suing him? Again. Are you still suing him for $100 million? No. You dropped that. The case has been resolved, Pierce. Yeah, did, did he... Correct. Well, did, yeah. did he pay any money or...? We can't discuss that. OK. Out of interest, how do you, how do you disprove that you've used anal beads to cheat? <laughs> I mean, how, how can I, you know, prove a, disprove a negative? It's, it's like, well, no, you know, how, how do you expect me... That was never a, a serious thing. That was something that the media caught up. But that was, you know, if you, if you look at the, the consensus among chess players, the consensus among experts, it is an unequivocal fact that I have never cheated in an over-the-board game. Yeah, be, but Hans, I'm be, just wondering, how do you disprove it? I mean, were you strip-searched? Did they explore cavities? Where do we go here? Well, through tournaments, there are security checks where they, you know, will do, you know, various security checks, you know, metal detectors, different scanners. Um, Would that pick up anal so beads? They, you know? they, I, I don't know, Pierce. So I, I have no. I'm genuinely I, curious. You should I have no idea. them on your I'm show. Not... You should you should invite them on your show and ask them that. It appears that. That's the main topic of your curiosity, appears to be that, as opposed to the fact that you have a 19-year-old champion who defeated a champion, who defeated the whole world of chess in the largest cyberbullying case in history, the world of chess versus Hans Niemann. And he's here to talk about it, and he's still a victor. And instead of becoming bitter, he became better. And you want to ask him about the anal bead, something he never said or never did? We don't know the answer to that question, Pierce. Maybe you can ask the anal bead people. Have them on your show, and they can explain it to you better. I think I will, because it's actually a fast... I mean, I, listen, I love chess. I was my school, my prep school you chess champion. You seem to champion. love anal beads better, Pierce. Well, I was my prep school chess champion. I never cheated. You're a better person. You're a better person. You, your words, not mine, Terence. Uh, but I'm just yes. I'm genuinely curious. It was a massive story, as you know. It's why you're famous outside of uh, the chess world. It's because there was this allegation made, and it was fueled by the world champion who couldn't understand how in normal circumstances you would beat him. Uh, and then came Mrs. Well, he's lost to many people of my same ranking many times. So this idea that it's a statistical anomaly, he can lose one game. Mm. And, and that's the issue, right? He lost to people similar age, similar rating, multiple times recently. So me beating him in a singular game 
is not a statistical anomaly, right? He hasn't agreed to play you, as I understand it. Is he, is he chickening out? What's the deal there? No, he has agreed to play me. He put out a public statement that he's, he will play right, against me. Right, but there's me. no date, right? So, well, when, it, when we are matched in a tournament, uh, which, which is inevitable, uh, 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 we will play. And will you allow yourself to be strip-searched just to rule out any rumours? I find that question to be just, you know... I, I can't take you seriously when you ask those questions, Pierce. I'm sorry. Because you're, you're entertaining, uh, 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 honestly, an allegation that should, should not even be taken seriously. Because it's, it's purely, you know, for, you know, for you to get media attention when this, when this is it's not even a serious thing. How can, how can you, as a reporter, take that allegation seriously at all? Well, I understand. No, but I know, do you genuinely believe that? No, but do you... Do you, hang uh, on. you know, do you actually I, believe that that, I, that is the case? I don't know. Could you, could you even fathom a world... I don't know. I, don't know. Where, I know you're is... capable of cheating because you've admitted it. I don't know how far you go. You cheated twice in a four-year well, period. I've never cheated in an over-the-board game. I've never... Well, I'm clearly not... I'm not capable, and I've never cheated in an over-the-board game. But so, we only so have your word that for that. You accept clear. that, right? We have your word for My that. My word? It's unequivocal. Chess.com themselves said that. Right. It is an unequivocal statistical fact that mm -hmm. I have never cheated in an over-the-board game. And that is something you cannot debate. Elon Musk, as you know, tweeted uh, on what was known as Twitter then is now X, talent hits a target no one else can hit, genius hits a target no one can see because it's in your butt. What did you feel when you read that? Well, uh, I was a bit surprised. Um, you know, uh, I, I was surprised. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really think much of it. You know, I, I focus on competing and um, I don't let these things affect me. And uh, my goal is to become the best chess player in the world and, and, and to give back to chess players all around the world. And uh, I think that chess is a beautiful game that should be spread and that's why I intend to do a lot more charity work and, and give back to the communities who helped me. Do you think when you play Magnus Carlsen again, you'll kick his butt, for want of a better phrase? You know, I'll just let my chest speak for itself. Hans Neiman. Uh, and Terence, your lawyer. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Still not quite sure what that lawyer was doing there, uh, to be honest with you. Or where the truth lies with Hans Neiman, the bad boy of chess. Did he or didn't he? I don't think I'm any the wiser after that. We know he does cheat, or has done, but did he go that far? What a story if he did. You can see the full uncut interview with Hans Zimmer. There's plenty more <laughs> on the Piers Morgan Uncensored YouTube channel. It's worth looking in full. Fascinating, fascinating story. We're coming next tonight, England's women's fishing team has pulled out of the World Angling Championships in protest at a trans angler's inclusion in their squad. Does physical power of a biological male who's transitioned, does that actually have a huge impact in fishing? Well, apparently it does, and we'll talk to those at the deep end of this row after the break. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? He's mocked your weight, Trump. Yeah, look at him. Fail. <laughs> Not working. Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. Do you believe you can win this war? You're making me cry again. They're trying to force you out. Yes, I feel betrayed. Keep it award winning. Mwah. Lucy Letby will die behind bars. And a senior doctor who first raised concerns about Letby wants NHS managers to be regulated. We needed answers a lot sooner. This is, what, seven years down the line? I mean, it's, it's completely ludicrous. We need accountability, we need performance in all walks of life. If this nurse had misgendered somebody on a board, she'd have been out the door. When they first got together, there were press stories. Weighty Katie. That would make her a better Princess of Wales. Ghislaine Maxwell agreed to be interviewed for the very first time. I honestly wish I'd never met him. Donald Trump has just said he expects to be arrested at 7.30 p.m. The Conservative Party can certainly win the next election. Can we? Yes, Labour absolutely. 29 no, no, points no, no, ahead no, in the polls. No, 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 no. Can we? Did he say, yes, I have taken drugs, and they bent the rules, or lied on the visa application form and therefore got it? There needs to be an intervention around abortion laws. Parliament is sovereign. Mm. Parliament can determine these things. The rest of the world has watched on in sort of mounting horror as this story has unraveled. For you, it was incredibly personal. The death toll from the Titanic tragedy has risen to 1,522, and may God rest their souls.
Let it roll. If we stop producing oil, the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know now you're probably going to boot me off the short end. <laughs> <this now. laughs> oh, Mark, 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 Mark. Some of them, they're easily led. You can kiss my American ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice of you. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> So are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. <laughs> We're now in Barbie world. You weren't asked to give evidence to the grand jury. I'm the only one that has been telling the truth. You don't drink, never taken drug. Mm -mm. You're stinking rich. Should we be concerned? <laughs> <laughs> if it's on your mind, it's on Talk TV. It's about you and your opinions. If you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. It's all about me. That's a joke. Coming up on The Talk, Russell Brand embarks on a bizarre rant about free speech after police launch a probe into sexual assault allegations against the presenter. Plus, Rishi Sunak is accused of abandoning the North in a gross act of vandalism as he considers axing whole stretches of HS2. And find out which English city centre has been unveiled as the country's capital of shoplifting. That's all at 9 o'clock. Welcome back to Piers Morgan on Sense. The members of the England ladies' angling team have refused to compete in this year's World Championships. The decision comes after a trans woman, Becky Lee Burtwistle Hodges, a former male rugby player, was picked for the team. Well, England's Angling Trust, the governing body, says trans women have no advantage over biological women. Many of England's star female anglers, however, vehemently disagree. And here to explain, after the captain of the England ladies' angling team, Heather Linfield and Wendy Metcalf, a former England ladies angling star who's described by North Nuf Norfolk News as a leading figure in the sport. So welcome to both of you. Uh, all right, let me start with you, Heather, if I may. There's a, a kind of belief from the governing bodies here that being a biological male would have no impact on the sport of angling. Is that right? That's what they're saying. And it, it's not true, but they do not realise that. They're mixing us up with coarse anglers, game anglers, sea fishing, we're battling the elements of the, the weather, there's weed, there's the, the tide. It's even walking in, in the water, getting knocked over because we're women. We cannot cast as far. Um, you know, sort of uh, majority of men are well over 100, 100 yards. Women aren't getting that distance whatsoever and it's just about the unfairness to us women um com you know with with um transgenders being on the team and it's not fair competitiveness and for those for like me who don't yeah. who don't fish much uh, my brother's a massive keen fisherman has been his whole life so he he would know but if you can cast twice as far or more than one of your competitors what advantage does that give you well, you've got obviously more water that you can cover. Sometimes there's fish that's further out. You get fish that sort of like do come close into shore and lots of majority of fish can be further out. So when you're fishing, you've got far more choice if you can cast further than, uh, than a woman, female. OK, let me bring in Wendy. You pulled out of the England team in 2018 because of all this. Uh, well, I've covered a lot of this stuff about uh, trans women beginning to dominate and, in my view, start to ruin women's sport and the integrity of women's sport. Why did you feel so strongly about this? I feel strongly about it. I feel very strongly about it. I think that this is nothing about Becky Lee. This is nothing against Becky Lee herself as a person. What she does in her, in her life is entirely up to her. It's no concern of ours. The problem is she has a significant amount of upper body strength. And it's not fair. It's not a fair and level playing field, Piers. Mm. Something's got to happen. Something The Angling Trust have really got to sit up and take notice of this. It's really not fair. I mean, what's fascinating to me is that this is really a point of principle for both of you because, of course, it gives England an unfair advantage and therefore we would have a better chance, presumably, of winning big competition. So you guys are really making a stand, Wendy, on a genuine point of principle which would actually harm your chances of success? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm very proud that the England ladies this year have pulled out. Um, I just can't thank them enough for, for standing their ground. It's about time that something was done about it. Um, and yes, you're right. Um, if we had Becky Lee in the team, it would give us an advantage. But if we won a medal, which I believe they did um, when Becky Lee was put in the team, mm. when, they were, when the Anglin Trust said that, that, that she wouldn't be entered into the team, um, they won bronze medal. But it's a hollow victory, Piers. It's not right. No, it's not. And Heather, I think this is the problem with all these, is that nobody feels good about this. And I don't feel good about uh, this trans athlete, this trans official woman, fisherman, whatever she wants to call herself. It doesn't matter to me. But what matters to me is the integrity of women's sport uh, being preserved and that women's rights to equality and fairness are not destroyed in the process. Yeah, Ex exactly. I, I'm sort of, um, you know... I've done a 20-odd year um, stint at this and I just want it right for the people that are coming in and who, are, who haven't got the voice because they're too scared in case they're not chosen to or selected for a team and they, they won't speak up because they're, they're afraid of this. Whereas I want to leave what I have put my whole life into, I want it leaving in safe hands for us women. Yeah, and I just don't understand. I don't understand why this particular uh, person, Becky, can't just continue to compete with biological men, which is her biological what? sex was as a, as a male. Why can't she that's, just keep doing that that's, with people who are of the same physical build? Yeah, that's what. That's my 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 main point is to Becky Lee. If you're watching this, why don't you put all your efforts into campaigning to get your own? Mm. Um, category yeah. that would make sense. Yeah. It, can you, it can would... you imagine? Can you imagine, Piers, what it would be like in the future? The whole of the women's team could be transgender. Well, I think it's, it's honestly, I, 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 like I say, I've done lots on this issue. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's got to stop, and we've got to protect women's sport. Thank you. We run out of time, ladies. Thank you both very much indeed for joining me, and good Thank on you, you for sticking up Thank for your you. principles. That's it from me. What are you up to? Keep it uncensored. Good night.